So now what we actually want to do is create a list of items that will be treated as our blog list. So we're going to create a fake list of items that we can actually iterate through in our template so we can see what that actually looks like. So far, we've just been kind of playing around with Angular, but it's now time to actually make a list view happen or actually list out these blog items. Um, so inside of this controller, we're going to add the scope. This is always where you'll do it. You'll always add scope inside of a controller because the controller is really displaying what happens. It's taking this HTML, it's taking the scope or otherwise known as the context into that HTML and making something happen. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna create a variable, declaring it by doing var, and then I'll say blog items. Notice how I actually case the actual variable of blog items. And I'm gonna create an array and inside of this array, it's also known as a list, we're going to have various dictionaries with some data. Now, this data is going to be fairly simple, right? So I'm going to say title and then some title. And then I'll just say ID equals to one. And then let's do description and I'll say this is a book. Okay, so this is this is a blog item. Obviously, we could have more things into it, but right now this is just going to be our basic detail. So I'm actually going to copy that, paste it again a few times. Oops, there we go. And then we'll change the IDs. And I'll also just change the titles a little bit. And Okay, so now we have an array full of items. So this, in a way, is simulating what a backend system would send our front end. So our backend would send us this data. This data is what then Angular will be able to consume and display. So for us to display it, we have to add it into our scope or the context for the template. And I'll just say blog items. Again, I'll give it the same context name it doesn't have to be it could just be items actually let's just call it items just to make it nice and simple for us and we're going to make it equal to the blog items and that's it so now in our blog list if i use the curly brackets of items i should see that list come out so let's look into our project and now we see that list very simple very straightforward so we want to actually loop through this stuff. That's the main thing that we're doing here. We want to loop through these items. So if you're familiar with other sort of backend systems, let's say for instance, you're coming from Django, you'd be looking for something like for item in items. That's a for loop. Um, there's all sorts of things like that inside of various front end programming languages. But in this case, we're using something called ng repeat that's gonna do our for loop for us. It's gonna do the actual repeating. So I'll do ul and then we'll do li ng repeat and it'll be item in items. Close off that li, close off the ul. And then inside of this list item, we can put item. And I'll do item.title first. So we'll save that and we'll refresh and there we go. So now we have our titles actually coming through as well as our IDs. So I can even make a link here and say a href equals to, let's say blog slash, well, we wanna get the ID, so I'll do item.id. And then we'll close that off. And let's make it a absolute path. So we save that, refresh, and now these are linked. If I click on it, it will actually take me to this link. Notice I get an error response, but that's okay. Um, but at the very least, we do see these links coming through. And actually, we can use nghref. So if I refresh in there, that's an Angular tag then. It's just slightly different, which we'll see once we actually get the rest of it working. But for now, this is actually showing us this data. So we've got item.id, but I could also try like item.publish on a uh, date and close off the curly brackets, refresh, nothing shows up, right? So if it's actually not inside of here, it's not gonna show up. But if it is, so publish date, and we say like 2016, nine and 11, 
save that, refresh, then it'll actually show us some sort of date, at least if it's there, if the data is actually there, which is kind of cool. So it's not showing us an error if we put some sort of data that's not there. Um, so that's actually iterating through a list item. Really cool, really simple, not that dif difficult to do. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this stuff right here and just say h1 blog list and close off the h1. Um, the other thing here is we could have something for the length of these items. So we can say, I'm gonna put a span class in here, say ng if, and then we'll say items.length equals to, well, let's see how many items that we had. We had four items. So if it's equal to four, then we'll say four items currently. Save it and refresh in here, and we get four items currently. Of course, we don't need that span item right here. We could just literally use ng length, but this is actually more important with if it's zero, and then we'll say posts coming soon. Right, so that makes a little bit more sense if it's zero that the post would be coming soon. And then we also could say this UI element, we would say ng if items.length is greater than zero. Really simple. And then that way it shows this list item. I mean, of course, if we had other things in here, this is where this would really make difference. Okay, so if you have any questions on this, let us know. Otherwise, let's keep going.